This is David Farkas with Red Dot Forum. I'm here with Stefan Scott. He's the product manager for the Leica SL system here at Leica. Hi, David. How are you? Good. So, obviously, uh, the SL has been sort of the big news of this photo kina with the focus on the professional. So, why don't you run me through some of the, uh, the announcements of the show and uh, we can dive right in. Yeah, of course. We have some, some great news for um, our existing customers. So the first thing is that we are finally able to deliver the hand grip. So we, we ship it uh, since Monday. And this gives um, the customers or the photographers a great opportunity to shoot in portrait mode. So you get an additional shutter uh, and the two wheels to control aperture and shutter speed. You have the joystick to operate and navigate out of focus. And that's pretty much it. There's an additional um, hand strap for keeping it here, so really secure. And you can, um, you can use the second battery. Uh, that's an optional second battery. So if you just want to have one battery inside the, the camera, the camera is sealed, or you plug in a second battery. So uh, with the hand grip, when you use the second battery, does it use the first battery uh, in the hand grip and then use the battery in the camera as a backup, or does it drain both simultaneously? The hand grip battery will be the first to drain, and then the camera battery. So that makes sense if you're in an environment where you don't want to have to take the hand grip off or you want to keep the camera sealed up. Exactly. That is, that's the use case, and that's um, fulfilled with this camera. Perfect. Okay, so uh, what else we've got? Obviously, we've got a really pretty lens here, the, uh, the new 50mm Sumalux SL Aspheric. Can you, can you tell me a little bit more about this lens? Yeah, this lens is our first prime lens, which we announced almost a year ago together with the complete system. And now we are ready to ship in early um, 2017. And this lens adds a very, very nice, um, it's a very nice lens for our portfolio. Since we have two great varios or zooms, and now we have the first prime. And this lens is fabulous for taking portraits. It's really, really nice lens for, I mean, for many applications, and um, yeah, it adds a great value to the system. So the design of this 50 is, uh, it's a little different than, uh, than certainly for the zooms, but also other 50 millimeters in general. Uh, can you tell me a little about that? Yeah, it has internal focusing, so the, the size of the lens doesn't change when you focus. And we don't have an uh, optical image stabilization in this, in this lens, because everything is trimmed on the highest optical performance. and the op the um, optical image stabilization, you lose some kind of performance, some percentage, and we, we wanted to add this percentage for this lens. So the, I think the, the rumors about the, or the quality about the, the Varios are quite nice, but of course this lens pushed the boundaries already a little bit. But there will be some more boundaries breakers in the future. And uh, would you consider this a, more of like a reference design, a, what I, I like to refer to as a statement lens, like just like the 50 millimeter Apple Summicron to the M system is a, is a statement of how good a 50 millimeter really can be. Would you say the, the same about this lens? Yes, I think this lens is a pure um, optical performer from Leica. So it goes into um, a new direction or to, to create really, really high performance out of focus lenses. Obviously we saw the, the product roadmap was released for the lenses that we can see here. Uh, why don't you tell me a little bit more about these? We've got some, uh, definitely, I think they're a little smaller, which some people have asked for. And then we also have the wide-angle zoom. So w walk me through those. Yeah. So in, um, in autumn um, next year, around that, that time, we're not so precise at the moment with the release dates, we're going to have um, a Summicron 75mm aspheric for the SL, followed by the 90mm. So Micron also, you see the compact size, the lens gets really small, but very, very high in performance. We, we talk about this after, after that. Then we're gonna get a 60 to 35 millimeter that will be a 3.5 to 4.5 lens, a wide angle zoom. We keep the, the aperture to that level to, to maintain the, the size of the, the Varios similar, quite similar, because 2.8 would have been just too big. And then uh, finally, in um, early 2018, we're going to get the 35 millimeter Summicron, which adds into the prime, the new prime line, as we call it. The Summicrons will be really, really nice.
you and I had just sat down a few minutes ago talking with Peter Carba, the head of optics here at Leica, and he seemed pretty excited about the these new lenses. So uh, something about next generation technology, next generation performance. I, I'd like to hear a little bit more about that. Yes, yeah, you, as you, uh, as many customers uh, tell us, that the Vario lenses at that time um, have prime level quality. I'm one of those people. I definitely uh, think that the 2490 is one of the best zooms I've ever used. So I think it's a bold statement to say we're going to raise the bar. <laughs> we're going to show with the zoom microns that there is um, there's higher optical performance possible, and we are we are very um, sure that we can achieve that because we started. Um, like so a lot of lens designs we, we did in the past and technologies or new technologies we did developed. That's why I have this um, 35 millimeter T lens or TL lens here. Because there is some technology in which we now transfer into the full frame format. So there are lots of, of technologies developed um, including um, production processes and optimization in, uh, within Leica, within the whole um, flow of products. And yeah, we are very, very um, excited to, to show the, these new lenses. The primes are a bit special. Because they're like our biggest adventure at the moment, in, moment within Leica. So what would you say to people? Obviously, we have a 50 Sumalux, and the next lenses coming are all in the Sumacron family. For, for Leica aficionados, I think we know what that means. But let's say for the, for the non-Leica indoctrinated, Sumalux means f1.4, Sumacrons are f2s. So there might be people that say, well, I, I have to have a 75 1.4. You know, why, why would I want a, an F2? And you told me something pretty interesting. So I, I'd like to, if you could tell me more about that. Yeah, as Peter, Peter mentioned, um, the, the depth of field will be, at, with this prime lens, it, it will be a, a different experience of depth of field for F.2. So the, the whole lens design has just they shrinked the, the depth of field to a level where um, it is a maybe 1.4 from the from the experience. That's definitely interesting. So we can have F2 size, F2 performance, but 1.4 equivalent depth of field, which I think will satisfy most users. Yeah, I wouldn't say equivalent because the look will be new. It will be, it is, whatever I've seen so far, it is something you haven't seen before. Because, of course, it is, um, it just, I can't really tell it. It's, it's so, I'm so excited, I would love to show some proofs, but um, we have to wait until uh, we get a go from, from our development team. Okay, cool. And uh, in terms of, of optical performance, uh, you guys can't stop talking about just how next level these are. So. When we look at lenses like the 50 Apo Sumacron for the M system, or uh, you know any of the, the legendary M lenses, so when we take a look at these, are we looking at something similar to that? This the, the 50 Apo was um, definitely one important step in the development of those new lenses. Like we started with this one, or we had some some other lenses, and we always move higher and higher. So I think I, I think Peter said that we have sort of a step-by-step -step progression, and it's these very little steps that, that seem to add up to quite a lot in the end, and that's what we're gonna see with these lenses. Right, he was, I mean, I, nothing to add when Vito said something about lenses. <laughs> the SL EVF is the highest resolution, largest EVF still in the industry. Uh, like is known for that, anyone that looks through the SL, you know, wow, you know, they, they really are impressed with the image quality of the EVF, and you were saying that you know, there might be even even more coming for that. Yeah, this is the hardware, and then we, we talk about development, which is more software-based, and um, from my perspective, EVF gives us a complete new access into photography. So basically to, to add new ways how we, we interact with the camera, how we interact with photography, and how we improve the joy of taking pictures, because everything comes down to the joy. Even a photographer, who choose this lovely job, um, he wants to have some fun with the camera, or at least not getting annoyed by it. It's a, for us, it's also a journey to learn things and to add new features and, and to find out what, where the EVF technology brings us, because there is a big future of EVF technology. 
we are following some some ideas and concepts um, to to interact nicely, more easy. That you you don't have to take the camera down. So basically, you operate by looking through the viewfinder and um, make it more intuitive. The, the, the whole process of picture uh, taking. Sure. Well, it's certainly fun for me. Uh, the camera is a lot of fun to use. It's it, it's quick. It's responsive, and it is really nice to see what you're getting before you actually get the shot, and uh, no delay. Very very quick. The other uh, thing you were telling me was kind of a, something new that I learned, which is uh, because the camera is really suited towards the live view functionality, as well as uh, doing video, which actually I'm using the SL for video and I love it. So there's, there's kind of a neat little hidden feature that, that you told me about. Yeah, I would say it's, um, it's nothing big from, from our perspective because it just delivers what you, you want to achieve. Um, the lens profiles we have for um, SL lenses um, or for, for all the M and R wide-winkle lenses are applied in real, uh, in real time to the, to the EVF and of course to the video. Because that was our goal that if you use lenses that, that needs to be corrected or be, become nicer when they are corrected, um, we wanted to have this in, in, in the live stream all the time. I, I think that's cool because not just for the SL lenses, but you were telling me as well that even M lenses, other than six bit coded that the camera detects through the adapter uh, or manually selected, that you're actually applying a lens profile in the camera in real time uh, for video applications, still applications, and also just for the user to see and preview what the final result will be. So I, I think that's, uh, that's, that's pretty neat and definitely something new I learned about the camera today. One of the major um, steps for this camera, or where we waited, and it was of course EVF by itself, resolution-wise, and this kind of um, technology that we are able to do this in real time. Yeah, so instead of coming out with a half step, really, I think, and I, I got the feeling, certainly, in many conversations over the years, that, that the SL was, you're waiting for the right moment when all the technology is available to create the product that you guys wanted to actually create that would offer all the quality, all the features, the speed, and everything that, that's in here right now. Exactly. When we, when we go back in time to the R, R9 um, ages, there was no, we were just not able to, to, to go into the digital DS or digi DSLR type of cameras, and it was on a horizon that was clear that this is not a future-proof um, concept anyway. So it was quite wise to stop it. it. It took a while. I know it was quite painful for some customers and even for our employees. And in some ways, they really love the system. But now we have um, like a mature product, which really delivers something for the needs of professional. It's not a half-half product. It's full commitment from Leica as well. If you see the, the lens portfolio, we are fully committed to that system. And we are very, very sure that this um, is future proof. Well, and certainly you can use our lenses, M lenses, Cine lenses, T lenses, SL lenses, now with NovaFlex's adapter and Leica's cooperation with that, uh, Canon EF lenses, Nikon E-type lenses. So it seems that, that the SL is sort of the universal lens platform, the universal professional platform that you can use for almost any, any job, any need. Exactly. That is the, the goal is that the body is inside all the applications and you choose just the lens for your needs. Because you choose SL lenses if you really need the highest performance, like the highest optical performance. But I know that there are some people out there that love the look of certain lenses, like Noctilux is one example, but there are many other, other lovely lenses. And so we are open the system in a way that you can just choose the lenses for your looks. And because the camera is so capable in video, and I know that Videographers, they really like certain old lenses, so they are really like more than welcome to use this camera with any kind of lenses they have in their portfolio or they like to purchase on a second-hand market. So I think that wraps it up uh, for our SL discussion. I want to thank Stefan. Stay tuned for more Photokina coverage uh, from Cologne, Germany.